Imagine you are looking for a word in the dictionary. In a linear search, you would need to start with the letter A and go through each word one at a time to find the word you are looking for. If the word is aardvark, you will find what you are looking for very quickly. If it is zebra, it will take a very long time. A binary search works differently though. Imagine we were looking for the word melon. We would open the dictionary in the middle and then look at the letter we were on. If we were on the letter F, we would know that melon is in the right hand half of the dictionary. So we would open this half in the middle. If we then arrived at the letter P, we would know that the word melon is on the left of that. We keep applying this process until we come down to the letter M. Then we repeat for the letters ME and then MEL and so on until we find the target. We are continually shrinking the list of data containing our target word by seeing where we currently are in the list. Let's consider another example. Consider we have a list of names and we want to search for four. The binary search algorithm would work as follows. You start at the middle index of the list. In our case, this is four. Check if this is what we're searching for. It isn't as we're not searching for Fred. Check if Thor is greater than or less than Fred. It is greater as Thor is alphabetically higher than Fred. We then identify the middle index of this right half of the list. If the halfway point is between two values, then we can either round up or down, though whichever one we choose we must use consistently. We then keep repeating this process of checking until we find our value. Step 1. Thor is above Fred. Step 2. Thor is above Matt. Step 3. Thor is below Val. And step 4. Thor has been found. The advantage of a binary search is that it can work on very large sets of data. The problem is that the list of data must be sorted. If you have data items that are not sorted, you will not know if your target word is above or below the word you are currently looking at. In addition, all the items in your list must be unique, i.e. only one of each, or you won't know which item you are looking for. Much like linear search algorithms, all binary search algorithms are identical. You start at the middle of a list and work your way through either half until you find the item you are looking for. They only differ in the answer they return. Let's assume you are looking for the word Cardiff in an array called data. The pseudocode for this algorithm looks like this. Let's look at some of the more important sections of this code in detail. The following line of code identifies the midpoint. This div command will get the whole number from a division, discarding the remainder. After this, we will check to see if the text at the midpoint is actually what we're looking for. If it is, we set the found flag to true, so we know that it has been located. The next section of code asks whether the data at the midpoint is less than what we're searching for. If it is, then we set the lower boundary one to the right of the midpoint. The following section of code instead asks whether the data at the midpoint is greater than what we're searching for. If it is, then we can set the upper boundary one to the left of the midpoint. Now, at the start of the new loop, the list to look at will be half the size it was before, so we are dividing the larger problem into smaller problems. The code will repeat on this list until the data we're searching for is located. We've seen the code for a binary search algorithm and in theory how it works, but what are the stages it goes through in order to find an item in a list? Let's create a trace table to work through this algorithm and see what is happening step by step. We have six variables size, search, lower bound, upper bound, midpoint, and found flag. First, we initialize any variables. First time around the loop, we will first calculate the midpoint. This is the calculation lower bound plus upper bound div 2. 
In this case, this would be 0 plus 4 div 2, which equals 2. We then check whether the list value at index 2 is equal to what we're searching for. The list value at index 2 is Liverpool, which is not equal to Cardiff, so nothing happens. We then check if Liverpool is below Cardiff alphabetically. It isn't, so nothing happens. Finally, we check if Liverpool is above Cardiff alphabetically. It is, so we set the upper bound of our list to the left of our current midpoint. This is 1. The next time through the loop, we again first calculate the midpoint. This time our midpoint will be 0. Remember, the div operator performs a division and returns the whole number, discarding the remainder. We can then check if the list value at index 0 is equal to Cardiff. The list value at index 0 is Brighton, which is of course not equal to Cardiff, so nothing happens. We then check if Brighton is below Cardiff alphabetically. It is, so we set the lower bound of our list to the right of our current midpoint. This is 1. We do finally do a check if Brighton is above Cardiff, but we already know it isn't, so nothing happens. The next time through the loop, we calculate the midpoint, this will give us 1. We can then check if the list value at index 1 is equal to Cardiff. It is, so we can now flag that it's been found. So you can see how this breaks down our problem into smaller chunks. This becomes much more efficient in larger lists of data. So, a binary search is a standard algorithm for finding an item in a list. You start in the middle and see if the item is the one you are looking for. If it is not the one you are looking for, you see if it is to the left or right of the midpoint and repeat the process. The size of the list of data you are looking for is halved each time you search. If you find what you are looking for, you set a flag to true. Binary searching works best on large sets of data. The data must be sorted in order though. 